guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Awaken OS on this device and this is the Android 11 based Awaken OS and here it says there are two different versions as you are noticing the vanilla version and the gapps included version and of course as usual I have flashed the gapps included version here and this is the 26th January 2021 build. So before I show you the about section here, let me tell you this is a MIUI vendor based ROM, not a OSS vendor based ROM. And as you can see, it says added OTA support and stuff for the GApps build. It says fixed lock screen padding for charging info. And then there is charging symbol and fixed crash for some users settings crash it says. But in my experience, I would say the settings crash still happens. But let me go into the about section and here is how it looks like on top we have the awaken os logo up there as you are noticing and the android version is of course android 11 here and the awaken version if you are noticing is 1.5.2 azure and it says official build of course the maintainer's name is listed as ios dube and here the security patch is latest of january 5th 2021 the stock kernel here is the perf g kernel and the is linux status by default is enforcing and the build date if you are noticing is january 25th and this is how the home screen looks like and if you're noticing the stock wallpaper looks really cool in my eyes at least and it has this awaken logo up here and it has this stripes looks cool the stock wallpaper i'm talking about here and let me go into the settings of the stock launcher let me show you which launcher is this this is the quick step launcher present by default on this rom and there are some customizations like you can add icon packs if you have some icon packs and from home screen there are a lot of customization like show google app and this is the left side of the home screen where it shows the google's discover page and it has the add a glance feature then alternative style is there for something then we have the show a random message so that really looks cool on the top of the home screen and we have the now playing option let me go back we have the show icon labels on desktop icon labels on drawers you can disable them if you want to then inside app drawer we have the suggestions option so you can actually disable these suggestions from here and in the misc settings we have this blur option let me go back we have the double tap gesture this is the double tap to sleep and we have the swipe down to clear all recents option and here as you can see the double tap to sleep is actually working flawlessly and this is how the always on display looks like if you want to see the fingerprint scanner speed and here if you notice from the always on display it works great no issues again from the lock screen it works great now let me show you on the lock screen again with the left hand thumb and as you can see it has unlocked let me show you from the always on display with the left hand thumb again it has unlocked now i'll try with night light turned on right now and here okay right now it unlocked it did not unlock for once again it did not unlock and again now it did so with nightlight with a little bit higher intensity it might be a little bit of weird experience here as you are noticing it's taking two attempts to unlock the device i would say right now it's not unlocking at all okay now it did so with nightlight turned on it goes a little bit bonkers but otherwise without nightlight definitely it unlocks very very fast and reliably to the left of the home screen again we have this google's discover page swiping down anywhere on the home screen gets you to the notification panel and or the quick settings panel you may say and here swiping up gets you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app from here of course and we have the widgets working totally fine here now talking about the quick settings panel this is how it looks like you can swipe between them as you can see the pages are there and you can edit and add more toggles from here let me show you there are plethora of quick toggles that you can add from there is something called headphone buddy i am not really sure what it does there is aod like always on display stuff then cpu info and things like that but i do not see the fps info over here or the fps info overlay whatever it's called that thing is simply missing from here but yes there is of course the android 11 screen recorder and if you want to use that you can and let me show you there are more toggles like the dc dimming mode and there is a reboot toggle too so you can directly reboot to recovery just from right here with this toggle you can just tap and hold it when it says recovery then it will reboot to recovery automatically then you can disable the heads up from here that is pretty cool and of course we have the dark theme do not disturb battery saver data saver everything else now the only disappointment that i have with this particular rom in my opinion that i would say is the stock camera this is a really like old kind of google camera as you are noticing you can switch the video mode and stuff with this but yeah this is a very basic google camera if you are noticing 
so that's how i feel and you can go into the settings and as you can see you can choose the resolution up to 12 megapixel and for videos there is the 4k option for the back camera and for the front camera you can take up to 5 megapixel photos and for the video with the front camera you have hd 1080p option i don't really like the stock camera here yes i know there is the anx camera which just released for android 11 as you can see this is the version 185r the anx camera latest one for android 11 but again you cannot really flash it i think with the orange box recovery you will need magic to flash this anx camera i have tried it on the redmi note 7 pro but again with this too the portrait mode is not really working i think so so that's how it is as of right now i don't really flash magic usually so i am not into it so i'm gonna wait for a custom rom which includes the nx camera by default this latest version i mean so i have installed a couple of google cameras here this is the latest unix version of the google camera which is working totally fine as you are noticing even with the front camera and stuff this is working fine with portrait mode and stuff it should be fine and this one has this zooming option just a little bit as you are noticing so yeah this is very cool features in my opinion and even the rear camera pictures are very cool so i would say this is a really great google camera if you want to go with with the latest version of the Yonix camera and again the older version which supports all the lenses as you are noticing of the Yonix camera is working fine too with the wide angle and telephoto lens or the normal main camera the 1x one so that too is working fine with this Yonix version and even night set and stuff should be totally working fine here but again i have installed these two separate google cameras which i'll link in the description below now let me go into the settings this is how the settings panel looks like and again as you can see it said in the change log that it has fixed the settings force close but again it force closes even right now so that's how it is this is how the stock in call ui looks like and again the vault e calling and vo wi-fi both are working fine here and this is a pixel 4 dialer so that is why there is no call recording option by default now let me jump into the awaken settings where you find the whole ui customization now here in the themes let me tell you one thing that there is this dark theme but even if you enable it let me show you there is no option to actually have the pitch black mode or the background i can see it's gray it's not totally black the dark mode does not have that so i would say it is a little bit weird if you are someone who uses the device in dark mode which i think you are here you won't be having that option because the dark mode is simply it shows the background as gray so it will still turn on those pixels or even there is the amulet display so that's what i do not like and in the clock style there are a couple of clock styles as you can see plethora of options are there even the spider-man and stuff looks cool in the lock screen and then we have the accent color customization and here plethora of accent colors are present by default here and there is the headline and body fonts again plethora of fonts are there then we have the icon shapes plenty of icon shapes are there then insert status bar icons we have the rounded sam filled etc options then we have the settings dashboard customization then we have the volume panel customization too and you have this five option for the volume panel itself by default this is how it looks like looks cool not bad at all but yes you can definitely change these like volume panel and you can have this audio style volume panel as you are noticing on the top so yeah pretty old school and we have this switch appearance too so you can change the toggle style over here in the settings like if i switch to the retro as you can see this is how the toggle looks like looks pretty cool but yes there is option to change even these kind of toggles and here we have the quick setting tile styles plenty of quick setting tile styles are there as you are noticing and there is a new tint style and we have the customized rounded corners over here you can customize it for sure and in the status bar we have the brightness control feature this is what i like that you can swipe a finger on the status bar and it adjusts the brightness of the screen so this is a really handy feature which i use on a daily basis and i really really love it there is the old mobile data type icon and then 4g icon data disabled icon roaming indicator and inside battery style we get the big dotted circle and the big circle as well right now i have the big dotted circle enabled and that's the reason why as you are noticing on the top the battery icon looks really cool and we have the battery percentage option uh, of course you can enable it and we have the battery percentage when charging then traffic indicator i use a separate app for that so i'm not like i have not enabled that but you can and in the position you can change the clock position on the status bar then we have the am pm style you can choose it to normal or small and then in status bar items we have the headset bluetooth etc options 
and there is also the wall D option. Let me go back. We have the quick setting option and here we have the vibrate on toggle touch brightness slider position. You can like change it like show when expanded or show always. So that's great. If I choose like show always, it shows even when it's not expanded. I mean the quick settings panel and even when it's expanded, it will show up there. Then we have the brightness slider at the bottom. So right now, as you can see right now, it's on the top. But if you swipe it, as you can see, it comes on the bottom. We have the data usage in quick setting header and there is the battery percentage on the quick settings panel too. Let me go back. We have the button section and we have the wake device playback control disable power menu on lock screen. You can disable that if you want to. And we have the show volume panel on left. So if I enable that right now, it won't be doing anything because I have the audio style enabled. But yes, I have seen it working. And here we have the invert layout pixel animation and the toggle torch when the screen is off this feature the long press power button toggle torch is actually working fine. We have the notification option and here we have the notification headers then sound if active then center notification header then we have the edge lighting options and we have the heads up option you can disable the heads up from here. Inside lock screen we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar as well both are working fine we have the fingerprint authentication vibration. But yes, there is no always unlock with the fingerprint scanner that is a little bit disappointing for me. Translucent notification background, then we have the charging. Okay, so the charging animation, you can change it to flash battery drop explosion, etc. And this is the normal charging animation, which like appears as pixel. And we have the fingerprint icons. Right now, we have these many icons. I would say it is pretty much similar to the Evolution X icons. And here is how much you get. And you can change the fingerprint pressed color and here we have the select fingerprint animation option and from here as you can see plethora of fingerprint scanner animations are there but again i do not see the cyberpunk 2077 animation here but except for that i think there are plethora of animations let me scroll down we have the media art the lock screen charging info and we have the show weather on lock screen and stuff and i have enabled that and customized a little bit so that's the reason why it looks like this over here on the lock screen looks cool i would say let me go back we have the ambient display here we have the battery level always on and double tap to check phone and stuff if you do not have the always on display turned on you can enable those and in the misc settings we have the allowed signature spoofing disable conditions or dashboard suggestions and we have the launch music app on headset and the gaming mode let me go back we have the battery settings and again the settings force closes for some reason and here is how the battery settings looks like there is a screen on time the battery temperature last full charge this is very simplistic and we have the battery saver thermal profile adaptive battery and stuff like that and you can see the full battery usage from here now i would say the screen on time is pretty good here are some screenshots about the battery life of this rom you can definitely get about six to seven hours of screen on time easily on this rom and 80 not fast charging of course working fine in the display settings we have this lock screen option and from here again we have this always show time and info option let me go back we have the brightness level night light adaptive brightness and stuff rotation and of course we have the styles and wallpapers and from here as you can see there is the like default wallpaper and in the grid settings you have up to six by six grid option then we have the clock option now the colors are set to boosted by default and we have the font size display size and the dpi customization double tap to wake is there and also you can customize the display cutout if you want to for some reason and there is a the dark theme and here we have the ambient display and inside here we have the anti flicker or the dc dimming mode inside sound settings we have the live caption and the now playing mode and inside pulse we have some navigation pulse of the like on the nav bar and stuff like that if you're using the old school nav bar it will show up i guess and it looks cool and in the Dirac sound enhancer we have the mi audio Dirac, and here you can set it to youth edition and the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is amazing and you can also enable this hi-fi preset and let me scroll down we have this like volume adjuster of course and then we have the vibrate for calls option vibrate on connect call waiting and disconnect like in call vibrations are here and if you scroll down we have the screen locking sound charging sound and vibration disabling option also there is the screenshot sound disabling option now in the system settings we do have a system updater and this is how it looks like as you can see it says project awaken and we have 1.5.2 version and you can check for updates from here but for some reason it says the update check failed so yeah that's how it is let me go back we have the gesture settings and from here we have the swipe to take screenshot and as you can see this is how you can take a screenshot you can share edit or delete them just from here let me go back we have the power menu and from here you can enable disable like device controls and stuff or enable it and by the way this is how the power menu looks like and if you're noticing we have this like smart home controls and then inside advanced you get all the options like power off 
restart, reboot to recovery or bootloader and just reboot the system UI. So all these options that you get. And inside system navigation gestures, we have this gesture navigation. If you go into the settings, we have the gesture bar length. You can change it to long and this is how it will look like if you do that. And inside advanced gestures, we have this extended swipe actions and we have the back gesture animation. You can disable it and we have the haptic feedback too. There is the two button and three button customizations too. Let me go back. We have the quickly open camera option. You can enable it if you want to. And in the front camera sound effects, we have up to these many front camera sound effects. No Star Wars options are there. And you can disable the camera LED just from here. And the default keyboard here is the Google keyboard. Right now, let me show you the face unlock and let me just set it up. So let's just double tap on the home screen to make the phone sleep. Right now, I'll double tap to wake. And here, if I swipe up, as you can see, as soon as I swipe up, it unlocks the screen. Let me show you one more time. So after I swipe up, it pops out the front camera. This is a very cool feature. As you can see, it does not open the front camera right away. You have to swipe up to use the face unlock. That's a great feature in my opinion. And these are the options that you get with the face unlock. Talking about the DRM info here, yes, it shows L3 for me at least because I have broken my sensors. But yes, I have flashed the persist image separately. So that is why it has become L3 for a lifetime, but it won't be the case for you. If your DRM certificate right now shows L1, that means if you flash this custom ROM, it will be still remain L1 for you at least, as this is a MIUI vendor based ROM, not a OSS vendor based ROM or something. And in terms of banking apps, as you can see, the safety net test simply passes. So that means you can use banking apps like Google Pay right out of the box here. You do not even need Magis Hide or something. Now, let me open a couple of apps here. This is just the Google camera which I have downloaded. Let me open File Explorer, Facebook, now Twitter. Now let's open Play Store, YouTube. Now let's open Instagram. Now let's open Google Home. Now what else? Let's open Flipkart. Now, okay, so the DRM info I have already opened. Let me open the safety net test too. This me home app. And right now, let's open all these apps from memory again. Chrome is in memory. Facebook still in memory. Twitter is in memory. Right now, let's open Play Store still in memory. File Explorer. Okay, the file explorer closed for some reason. Instagram again reloading. Google Home is still in memory. Right now, let's open Twitter again. Still in memory. YouTube. Okay, YouTube is reloading. So for some reason right now, it's reloading a couple of apps. But I would say in my usage, I have never seen this kind of thing. And I would say in my kind of usage, I have never seen apps getting removed from memory. But right now it is removing some memory. So the memory management may not be like the greatest of all time. But I would say it is pretty good. As you are noticing right now, the apps are staying in memory right now. Okay, the files again was removed from memory. So I would say it is a mixed kind of experience right now here. But yeah. In my personal usage, I have never seen apps getting removed so frequently, but right now it's happening. And here's the Android and Geekbench score for this particular build. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. And if you want to show your friends how the Awaken OS works on their Redmi K20 Pros, you can share this video with them. And please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.